Damn it! Slow down. Deep breaths. Hear the shot. That's insane. How can I... Listen. Shoot the sound. I hear them. And let her rip. <sighs> that was embarrassing. <laughs> it really was. I'm starting to think you're a slow learner. Now you're just projecting. Whoa, was that a dig at the investigation? Maybe. Sir, why don't you show me how it's done? How about this? We'll come back tomorrow and practice, and the day after that until you get it. I'd like that. I really would. But I'm leaving, sir. When did this happen? The science ministry. I mean, my assignment was to assist you with the investigation. Now that the Romulans have claimed responsibility... Investigation's over. Okay. Just think. You'll be free. My punctuality annoys you. My superior science knowledge is a nuisance. And with a little practice, I was going to be a sharpshooter. Better than you. I don't think you have to worry too much about outdoing me there. I don't see sharpshooter in your future in any dimension. When do you leave? Day after tomorrow. Don't forget to pack your desk. I won't forget. Sona have shown a willingness to return to the bargaining table. That is likely just part of their strategy. Once we make our boundary proposal, they can turn back to their people and say that they acted in good faith while we insult them. Predictable, not particularly clever, but certainly effective. The Sona have shown that despite frail tendons, they're willing to drag their heels indefinitely. Please, let's not sprain our ankles jumping to conclusions, shall we? <laughs> A speedy resolution would be advantageous. They'll feel some pressure once you give your State of the Federation address, Madam President. Which brings us to you, Mr. Brodick. I, oh, oh I, I, I'm, 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 I'm terribly, frightfully sorry. It's just... Presidential shell shock? Don't worry, it happens to the best of us. Mr. Brodick, look at me. You are the best speechwriter in the Quadrant. This will be my first State of the Federation address, and only with your help can I deliver the bold message that the people deserve from their new leader. Make me proud. I serve at your pleasure, Madam President. Indeed. Have we concluded our business? Actually, there is one more item, Madam President. My time is precious. Abram Nalidi. What of him? 
My deputy forwarded me a speech he made this weekend on Rigel 7. And what was the good president of Ardana doing on Rigel 7? Criticizing you. Is this to be a regular feature of our morning meetings? Galactic gossip? He criticized your stance on education before he even heard it. Rigel 7's test scores have steadily declined over the past 10 years. Their school system is now in the bottom 10% of the Federation member planets. We can explain away the low scores. Why not simply improve them? Madam President, you have developed one of the most comprehensive education reform policies in Federation history. It's all right here. The Quadrant will know soon enough. Then why waste my time with the Ardanans' criticisms? Because the attack is suspicious. Exactly. See, we plan to push education following the State of the Federation Address. And then suddenly, Abram Nalidi is not only out in front of the issue, but he's looking back and criticizing a stance that you haven't even taken yet. There's a leak. Then let us find this leak and put the matter to rest. Tyrol's a reasonable person. She won't mind a little scruff. Just be glad you're not my first officer. Has Barrett quit yet? <laughs> he wishes. But I think that I have him so scared he wouldn't even contemplate such a move. So, will you be joining us in defense of this great ally, the Romulan Star Empire? First officer. Can I think about it? I suppose. That's your right. But now that the Romulans have claimed responsibility, what's left for you there, McCabe? He's here, Madam President. I have an assignment for you. A simple investigation, so I know you will need plenty of time to complete it. My only hope is that you don't leave it to me to get a confession out of the responsible party again. See, the beauty of that situation was your ability to get involved in the planning stages. Someone in this office has been providing outsiders with cabinet-level information. Politics? My job is to keep you safe, not safeguard your political well-being. If the barriers around my information can be breached, what about those barriers meant to keep me safe? Besides, it is apparent you have plenty of free time on your hands just now. Your beauty transcends the galaxy. Too much time passes between our communication, my love. It's only been a day. I must drink you in. Will you show me what is mine? Marvelous. Now you. I apologize. This new way is unacceptable. And my hair grows thinner by the day. And my eyes, I can't see as far as I used to. Does that mean you haven't read the books I sent you? The factory has quadrupled production recently, and it has made me want nothing more than to fall asleep the instant I return home. Without you here, why bother? I'll be home soon enough. No. Your timeline is unacceptable. The ritual date has been set. I must finish this assignment. The Ministry of Science... I sacrificed a career just to be with you. No such sacrifice is being asked of you here. Your career won't be affected if you return to Free Child. But your marriage will be. And finally, the, uh, the ribbon cutting ceremony will be at 9 a.m. That's 0900 for those of you on military time. <laughs> 
Are there any questions? Mr. 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 Yes. Why wasn't President Nalidi of Ardena invited to the ceremony? Is President Vindipal threatened by Nalidi? Was his invitation lost in subspace? How's Ardena? One at a time, please. Please. One at a time. Has Ardena been marginalized by the Federation Council? I'm terribly, frightfully sorry, Commander. I'm afraid I'm not much of an organizer. And with so many drafts of the speech to take care of. The President hired you for your writing style, not your filing skills. I suppose you're right. <laughs> Often am. So, you used to write for Minister Cromlin before coming here, is that correct? Yes. But I want to assure you that I have no desire to share with him any of the President's plans before she's announced them. Vindipal liked the speech you wrote concerning compassionate governing. She's not known for her compassion. I respectfully disagree, Commander. The President is a profoundly passionate person. Passion can be easily transformed into compassion. You're so sure? I believe that over time, as she encounters more of her citizenry, forges new alliances and revitalizes nations, she will become invested in community, in culture, in people. Still, maybe you disagree with her education reform, or maybe you know someone else who does. Would you consider yourself a fan of President Seafron and his policies? President Seafron was cautious, where President Vindenpaul is bold. He went to Romulus with great fanfare. He announced to the Quadrant how he was about to make a bold move by meeting the Romulans on their doorstep, face to face. He prepared us for the surprise. But President Vindenpaul, she genuinely surprises us because her actions cannot be predicted. Thank you for your time, Mr. Braddock. Am I still a suspect? Unless you're writing down the President's plans and Sending them out via carrier pigeon? Don't really consider you a suspect. Thank you, Commander. I hope I've been of some help to you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thought I could sneak off the ship without you noticing I was gone. It doesn't work like that. Nothing comes or goes without passing through me except for sensitive information from the cabinet. Speaking of which, do you have your comm traffic analysis? I was going to forward it once I finished my conclusion. Why don't you give me your conclusion now? Uh, the comm traffic relays on Federation 1 are virtually a one-way street. A lot more goes out than comes in, and what does go out usually does so all at once. Not a conclusion. That's an observation. Maybe it's a good thing you're leaving. Nothing's come in or out as far as Ardenan. So whoever leaked it did so in person, or had some way of physically transporting messages off the ship, where later they are transmitted to Ardenan. Looks like I'll be studying the comm traffic of every ship that's docked with or even come near Federation One since Vindenpaul. Of course you would. Thank you. I've learned so much from you. Here. Don't open it now. Wait until you get on the ship. I don't know. See your reaction in case you don't like it. I may not like it? Why? Oh, because you picked it out. Goodbye, Deputy. A damned invitation? What is this, grade school? You've forgotten your basics. One, two, three, A, B, C. Don't make the president look like an idiot. Nalidi was quietly and slowly setting himself up as Vendon Paul's opponent. But because of this one egregiously stupid error, he has now quickly and loudly turned the president into a villain. We're not gonna even need an election, special or otherwise. All that he needs to do next is to have a photo op at a Bajoran temple, have his paw read by the Kai! The lady was not the only person left off the guest list. 
The press has turned this into a big story because we have let it become one. Now we cannot fight fire with fire. The situation needs more of a controlled burn. Mr. Cart, I need some face time. Devise a plan and brief me in an hour. Ah. Am I next on your list of suspects? Do you want to go down to the brig, or would you care to explain to me why you leaked information to Nalidi? You can't arrest me. I've done nothing illegal. All is fair in politics, and I had my reasons. Article 227 of the Federation Security Council Code, Part 449, it's wordy, so I'll sum it up for you. The release of classified cabinet documents is punishable by up to 30 years in a detention facility. Such a document would have to receive classification. A speech not yet given, minutes of a meeting. These things do not reach the threshold for government security. And yet, cabinet work product is shielded from judicial review, absent harmful or patently criminal activity associated with it. That sounds like a secrecy classification to me. But I don't see any point in prosecuting you. The president would most likely pardon you or further obstruct the inquiry in some other way. Who do you think authorized the leak? Unbelievable. It was the best tactic by which we could expose the president's political enemies. There have been rumors of a special election ever since that pod exploded. Now we know Nalidi is going to make a run at us. The will of the people doesn't matter. The rule of law doesn't matter. What's right doesn't matter. If nothing matters to you, what could possibly be of value to you? It's politics. Know your foes and know what to do with them. I know you're the empath, but even I can sense your anxiety. Bottle it up before she gets in here. Okay, well, what about your anxiety? I lament that a silly reception should prove to be the undoing of my entire political career. <laughs> Perhaps it served me right for avoiding the formal dances of my youth. Madam President, uh, I am so sorry. I am fully prepared to offer my resignation. Oh, nonsense, Tam. It was an invitation to a party, not the second Kitomer Accords. What I need is a fresh idea. I suspect that the best the four of us can come up with is a strategy steeped in traditional politics. Tear down the lady, go on the offensive, pivot away from any questions dealing with the party. But I refuse to believe there are no new ideas. If I may make a suggestion. See, Nalidi has made your education platform a target. So, why not appoint him Secretary of Education? That's your suggestion. Bravo, Tom, brilliant. Madam President, this reeks of political gain. You could be labeled a political opportunist. Margaret, I appreciate your caution and your wisdom, but I have been labeled far worse than that. Offer him. Let's move Kozawalski's team to this security junction. Shut down this other one. Easily done. Sir, do you ever get nervous standing next to the president? No. I'm not protecting myself. I'm protecting her. Well, I, I don't know that I could ever do that. You would if you had to. It's the job. Is there anything else? Yes, sir. One more thing. Three Romulan ships are set to dock with the station shortly after the ceremony ends to complete the station. Three ships with heavy machinery. I've input the changes you requested. 
No references to the Klingons or the Dominion War. Uh, Mr. Broderick, please be advised. I've made some slight modifications to the education section. D-section was... We worked so hard on it. That was fast. Madam President, the lady has rejected your offer to become the Federation's Secretary of Education. Furthermore, he intends to give a press conference on the promenade of this station directly after your address. So after all the trouble with that invitation, he's still not coming? No. They're ready for you, Madam President. Before I go, I must tell you a story. There once was a man who screamed at the sky. He did not care that the sky was infinite. He did not care that it could swallow him whole. He believed that he could beat the sky if only it would accept his challenge. For you see, as a boy, the man had learned that you never treat a foe with disrespect. He saw a challenge as a bond, a contract, an agreement. But he did not know what the man soon learned, that the sky had already won the challenge. Because the sky could not be defeated, it was unending. We are the sky, and we are infinite. Let the man scream. Lieutenant? Am I in a hollow novel? Uh, Lieutenant Commander McCabe from Federation One, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Of course. Wait, did Lisa Rochelle and Danielle put you up to this? And they are? Uh, it's just I haven't been on a date in a few months. I figured they told you where to find me. No, uh, I'm with Presidential Security, so I'm pretty good at tracking people down. How can I help you, sir? Call me Matt, Lieutenant. Go in. I'm trying to figure out just what it is exactly the Romulans are planning to install later tonight. Oh, I don't know. I, I honestly don't. My XO told me we'd be briefed by Starfleet Intelligence just before they arrived with the equipment. Ouch. What happened there? Oh, this stupid. An unruly plasma relay got me. Just get that looked at. Walk me to sick bay. The president will wonder where I am. She's no fun, is she? No, not at all. Well, Matt, if the president ever lets you out to play, there's a great after hours place on the promenade. Next, sir. Get that hand like that for me, okay? Mm hmm. Computer, when was Admiral Selick last on the ship? That is not a valid question. When was he last in his office? That is not a valid question. Show me the transporter logs from the last week. Accessing. Security clearance level three or above is required to access files. Show me the maintenance logs for Unity Station from the last three days. Highlight all work orders completed by Lieutenant Gwen Miller. Working. The deflector dish. Computer, show me a scan of the station's deflector dish. Authorization McCabe Beta Lambda 412368. Specify parameters. Computer, I noticed the deflector's power grid has been upgraded beyond station specs. Show me additional wave frequencies it can now accommodate. Gravitons. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> Incoming subspace signal. Commander, this is unexpected. My ears were burning. Tell me again what happened to the magnetic constrictors on President Seafront's diplomatic module. The Tal Shiar virus caused the magnetic constrictors to depolarize. That's when the breach happened. Textbook. 
The Tal Shiar specialize in destabilizing governments, and their adaptive viruses are the perfect tool. But it doesn't make sense. Why would rogue agents buy a virus from a third party when they could have easily obtained it through legitimate channels? Maybe the Tal Shiar knew they were rogue before the assassination and had begun to limit their access. Maybe. Then again, if they knew in advance that the agents were rogue, the Tal Shiar would have been tracking their every move. No way they'd be able to hide the purchase of an adaptive virus. It doesn't fit. Why did you want me to explain something you already knew? I like the way you explain it. Besides, I wanted you to know that I'd be taking all the credit for solving this thing. Is that why you look so dogged for the glory? What explains the lack of hygiene? Take care of yourself. And thanks. Message, Commander McCabe. Put it through to my office. Have you come to pay your respects to? Well, let me tell you something, mister. This Commodore's got plenty of light years left. I've been getting calls from all over the quadrant. Even Hunter figured it out. The last thing I need is to be reminded. You don't look a day over 30. What do you want? It requires the use of that Commodore rank insignia that you wear so well for a woman so young. Well. That would explain all the encryption. By the way, what is it that you call your little cipher program? The type A experiment? I could change it to happy birthday. Sir? Out with it. My ice cream cake is melting. I need to get off this ship. Madam Speaker, Distinguished members of the Council, honored guests, and my fellow citizens. Today marks my first State of the Union address to you. A constitutional duty as old as the Republic itself. From this podium, Jonathan Archer asked the galaxy to stand together to achieve a common goal of peace. An institution so many have fought and died for. This united federation of planets. Know that I will never abandon the hope that our unity represents. That I will fight on the principles for which we stand and die for its everlasting posterity. There are those who consider me an outsider to this government, and this is true. I have been critical of the Council's past policies, but as I said when I assumed this office, we stand for freedom. Seldom have the stakes been higher for the Federation. What we do and say here will make all the difference to our ships protecting the Beta Quadrant. Teachers and students on Rigel, orphans of the Breen Tholian War, to everyday Federation citizens who harbor the simple wish of a secure future for their children. In order to understand the state of the Federation, we cannot simply look at where we are and where we've been. We must look at where we are going. We cannot be afraid of change. Fear blankets the universe. It wraps us up in its stifling draw. And if we accept fear, then we lose our ability to trust. I am not here to make change for the sake of change, to erase the memory of Seyfran, or to organize the Federation as I see fit. I am here to set us free, all of us. That is the power of government, to unlock the power within ourselves and give us the power to change. The state of this Federation depends upon our decisions. The importance we assign to choosing community over self, fighting for the needs of others, rather than letting our selfish needs weigh us down and take away our freedom. Your approval numbers have tripled. The people know greatness. President Naledi has rejected your offer of a cabinet position, Madam President. Furthermore, he intends to impede your educational reform. What else? The Sona negotiations are going nowhere fast. Prepare a statement on the matter. 
These negotiations have taken their toll on both sides. It is time for a resolution. Madam President, I fear that any statement made in support of the negotiations might compel other races wishing to redraw their borders to speak up. Also, your constituents might not support you kowtowing to the Sona. Then we will work that much harder to sway those disparate opinions. Group, thank you. You're excused. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Madam, Madam President. President. Now? He's waiting outside. What's the delay? Not your best month, Commander McKay, but it appears Starfleet wants to put you out to pasture. By that, do you mean to imply that this assignment is out to stud? There's only one person in this office permitted to have an overinflated sense of self. Acknowledge your new orders and go. Personnel review and retraining. Doesn't sound like I did my job. Perhaps if you had completed your assignment, you wouldn't find yourself on the verge of oblivion. No. You'd be in jail, Madam President. Enter. You should be halfway to Ridgehide by now. Couldn't let you take all the glory. Be so undeserved. Then I read NC's press release that you'd been reassigned. Temporarily. Commander, are you all right? Just looking to unwind. What's in it for you? Sorry? This trip, going with me. Adventure. Never been to Deep Space 12. Not staying there long. Then where are you? I can't take you with me. It's too dangerous. I'm choosing the danger. Unity Station has been upgraded with a deflector array capable of belching gravitons at a specific location. It's not a standard feature. Going after the subspace weapons. The physical location of the deal will lead me to the assassins. They're offering bounties to anyone who kills undercover Starfleet officers on that station and anyone helping them. Like I said, I can't ask you to go with me. I don't know where I stand right now. I don't know much of anything, except that I can't let anything happen to you. Commander. Matt. I cannot let you do this alone. Besides, you could use a sharpshooter. Then to our success. Hell's Gate, here we come. 